Look gamers, I get it. There hasn't been a single good 3D Sonic game since Sonic Adventure 2, arguably. And even that game has its fair share of flaws. Many have adopted the belief that Sonic games simply cannot be good at all, and I mean, if Sonic Team keeps making them like they have been, I'd wholeheartedly agree with them. However, I think that mentality is a bit of a cop-out, but a natural one that derives from a very reasonable loss of hope. As someone who has been a fan of Sonic since I was a kid, I've had my ups and downs with the series. I went from genuinely enjoying the games because I thought they were fun to moderately enjoying the games because I've completely written them off as shitposts. And that was fine for a while, but now it's 2020. Settling for mediocrity when there is no excuse just isn't fun anymore. Which is why I'm here today to save the Sonic series by fixing everything that is wrong with it. And boy, is that a lot of things. To begin, we gotta give credit where credit is due, by looking into the past and taking note of what Sonic games have done right in their very arduous journey through the Z-Axis. Take Sonic Adventure 2. It's often held as the peak of the Sonic series. But why is that when the gameplay is just as rough and glitchy as its contemporaries? Well, Sonic Adventure 2 is one of the many Sonic games that is more or less praised for what it accomplishes in concept rather than execution. It presents a story with several sides and perspectives while dividing up the gameplay between multiple characters with differing playstyles. Sonic Adventure 2 provides the very spice of life that we call variety, and it easily has the most well-written story out of the 3D titles. Oh, and it gives you the Chow Garden, a very fun game in and of itself that the player could do on the side or simply choose to ignore, and gosh darn, do I love these little adorable things. Please, Sega, bring back the Chow Gardens, give us a mobile game, I don't even care, I would be all over it. Adventure 2 succeeds over Adventure 1 in just about every way, except for the fact that Adventure 1 has a hub world through the means of Adventure Field providing the player with a nice break from the story if they so choose, as well as a safe environment to simply enjoy running around in and interacting with. Coincidentally, one of the same areas that Sonic Unleashed succeeds in, granted it could benefit from losing the whole Sun and Moon metal system. Unleashed is also often held as the best in the series of games that use the boost formula, and that's because it has somewhat competent level design while maintaining the high velocity gameplay that people love so much. Though, if you ask me, I think it's safe to say that people are fairly tired of the boost formula at this point given that it seems like Sega doesn't know how to make a 3D Sonic game without it, and the situation isn't helped by the fact that boost is the only defining trait that Sonic Forces has and it can essentially be beaten by holding one button. Forces honestly felt like it was going to be a return to form, as the trailers they had shown leading up to it made it seem like it was going to be a full-on Sonic Adventure 3, topped with the fan service that Generations had. Speaking of Generations, it does a lot right, as it is still to this day the truest celebration of all that Sonic is and was. It's a light-hearted game filled with countless characters from across the series, and it's a shame that you can't play as them all. Generations also has somewhat of a hub world, well, I mean, as much of a hub world as a straight line can be. And inside of this hub, there are multiple portals that lead to side missions, and you can unlock fan servicey boss fights with characters like Shadow and Metal Sonic. Generations also takes some of its best levels from the Sonic series, and puts a fresh twist on all of them in both the modern and classic versions of levels. Generations is really good, but it's way too short. Though short and sweet isn't necessarily a bad thing, but at this point, when a game that has enough content to keep me playing for 100 plus hours costs the same price as one that I could finish in two, I'd feel much better spending my money on the former. Also, the classic Sonic segments just kind of feel... off? Now, what I'm about to say may very well be the hottest gamer take of the past 20 years. If I were to ignore Adventure 2, my favorite 3D Sonic game may very well be Sonic 06. And that is because it does so much right in the face of concepts. Sonic 06 is highly ambitious, and I genuinely think that if it were actually finished and polished and maybe had a few script revisions, ugh, it would hands down be the best 3D Sonic game simply for what it tries to accomplish. It has a hub world with lots of side quests to keep the player engaged if they don't want to deal with the absolute hell that is the main story. And in that hub, you can freely practice just about every major mechanic that the game gives you. And much like Adventure 2, allows you to play as various characters throughout the story to add variety, but ultimately fails given the poor design of both the levels of the characters and the characters' mechanics. The levels that I enjoyed the most in this game were Silver's by far, and I know that's a bit of a divisive statement given that some of those levels are really hit or miss, but they were actually different from the other two because Shadow is just Sonic with vehicles and weapons, but that's just it, he's still Sonic. Silver plays completely differently from any other character in the game, and the puzzles in his segments are actually kind of fun and intuitive sometimes. 
And I know people constantly harp on the Sonic games that have taken a darker and more serious tone in their stories, but take a look at Lost World. That's what you get when you completely do away with any and all serious and make it way too lighthearted. There needs to be a good balance. So far, the things that I've listed that I enjoy the most from previous Sonic games are a hub world filled with side content, the ability to play as multiple characters, and interesting and fun level design. So what I like is variety and lack of linearity. Some of you are probably thinking, wait, it sounds like the ideal 3D Sonic game you're trying to describe is... Sonic Boom? And to that I say, no. Sonic Boom slows things down way too much and butchers any and all story that it has. The game is entirely too broken and there is very little reward for actually doing any of the side content. What I want is an open world. I want collectibles. I want side quests. I want side stories. I want fast travel to multiple zones. The ability to switch characters. Exploration that isn't inhibited by going fast. A coherent story that makes sense and is interesting. And most of all, a polished game without game breaking glitches and exploits. I'm about to show you a Sonic fan game that has open world areas and handles momentum in a very competent way. I'm referring to Sonic Utopia. Imagine a game where every area is like this in a giant map similar to Breath of the Wild, where the world is your oyster and there is always something to do and interact with at every turn. Have zones connect, have like hub-like cities with tons of characters, fill this world and make it feel alive. Have main story objectives appear as key points on the map, it doesn't have to be completely non-linear, just don't make every level into a com conveniently designed straight line for Sonic to run through. Have the ability to fast travel through warp wings like in the movie. Give the player new and unique mechanics that make exploration and combat interesting. And I know that Sonic Unleashed tried to do this with a werehog, but I mean, those segments, they could definitely be a lot better. Give the player a health system that isn't all or nothing. Have rings simply be a currency that allows you to buy various items or upgrades used for customization. Going fast in previous Sonic games isn't fun because of the restrictions that are put on the player. You just go through a set path with no room for exploration, and when there is exploration, it's unrewarding and half-assed, and it requires the player to slow down at very specific areas of this straight line designed for them to speed through, and it just effectively breaks up the flow of the game. By this point, most people have played an open world game and know what they like in one. Just take one of those and lend it to speed. Make each character feel like you're playing a different game. Like, for example, like have Shadow Story be like a third person shooter, I don't know, make it into like an action game that takes on darker themes. Have his areas be more like indoor segments or in other dimensions. Like, make Silver feel like playing like a Star Wars game, like Fallen Order or Force Unleashed, how he practically uses the Force already. Make Knuckle segments be more action oriented, like playing Yakuza or Shinmu. I can go on for every character. Just make them all feel different. Like I'm, I mean, we can have like a Metal Gear Solid style Rouge the Bat campaign. That'd be pretty good, right? Anyways, <laughs> an open world game isn't complete without fishing side mates. That's right. Make Big the Cat playable and give him his very own line of side missions oriented around mini games. Hell, Sega's done fishing games before. They have what it takes to make a good one. And as far as the soundtrack is concerned. Have each character's missions and segments have different styles of music, like for Shadow, keep the edgy, crushed 40 butt rock, or for Knuckles, play rap similar to like Pumpkin Hill or Unknown from M.E., or have an upbeat combat rap similar to like Street Fighter Third Strike's opening or like TJ Combo from Killer Instinct. Well, I mean, Sonic's music is naturally songs like Green Hill and you know the stuff that you're used to hearing when you think of Sonic, like Escape Through the City and whatnot. And I know this is a lot to ask, but it's all doable, and I know Sega possesses the means to do it. Hire people who care and are passionate. After all, Sonic Mania was a huge success, wasn't it? Also, make the characters feel real and fleshed out. Don't just have them be one-note archetypes. Like, for example, in the Sonic movie, Sonic feels like a real character, and the writers certainly did a great job of making him feel lovable right off the bat because kids in the theater felt genuinely upset whenever anything bad would happen to him. Anyways, this is getting fairly ranty, but imagine the potential of just how spectacular of a game that Sonic could be if they simply abandoned the formula they've been sticking to for so long, have them make the same transition that Zelda did when going from Skyward Sword to Breath of the Wild while still maintaining what makes it the series that it is at its core. I guess what I'm saying is, stop getting so focused on trying to make a 3D Sonic game appeal to the same strengths as the 2D ones. As long as you do that, whatever product you end up making will be compared to the games that simply do it better and make it feel inferior as a result. 2D Sonic games have mastered the formula that is the speed platformer. Just keep putting out games like Sonic Mania alongside big 3D titles. Except, have those 3D titles be something entirely different so that you appeal to not only the fans of the classic and modern Sonic games, but also gamers as a whole. 
I hope that the ideas I brought up today at least get you thinking on what you'd like to see in a 3D Sonic title, and what you think would genuinely make a good game. This has been Logie from Trifecta TV, and I'll see you all in the next one. Also, I'm still waiting on my Sonic the Hedgehog the movie the game. License titles are usually bad, but for once, they don't have to be. Please, Sega, please, having a video game Jim Carrey rendered with the same quality as Square Enix characters is please better than this nightmare.